Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mike Colleen at MikeColleen.com. Okay, so for this, this is the second part of the video. I'm going to just start right where we left off. See, we as humans, we see everything through our filters, through the way we see it. So we assume, well, that's the way they are too, when they're probably not like you at all. Humans are radically different. We all have different. Now, these are all filters, by the way. We have different values, rules, and beliefs. We have different traumas, different experiences, different learnings, different teachings, different things that we're taught. So the, the challenge with, with humans, all of us, we think, well, this is the way life is. This is the way people are. No, this is just the way you are. This is the way you see things. This is the way you think. So it's the same thing with the narcissist. They are really nasty people. They think negatively. Their whole internal dialogue is this, it's horrible. And they think everybody else is like that. They think that people view other people the way they view people. That, oh, well... Well, the only reason, and this is what they'll do. You could literally do something nice to a narcissist, but they filter it through, huh, why are they being nice to me? Oh, they're trying to get me to lower my guard. Oh, okay. And they'll get mad at you for that. Oh, you're trying to trick me. And you're like, no, I'm just trying to give you a gift. What are you talking about? And they'll get revenge on you. And you're like, what did I do? And they're like, huh, well, I mean, you gave me a gift. I'm like, yeah, so like, uh, well, uh, hmm. All right, so here's what people are doing all the time. People are expressing who they are. If you start paying attention and listening to what they're saying to you, they're talking about their own beliefs, rules, values, experiences, and trauma. They're sharing with you the way that they view people, the way that they view life and the world. And that's a really important distinction to see it from that perspective. Because they'll show you what's coming. So a friend of mine, Greg, early on, he had went through a divorce. And... All right, so here's the deal. He learned the hard way at a very young age, and uh, he went through a, an anger stage. And I remember one day he said, look. And he, no, I think he learned this from his father, too. In fact, I think that's what he said. He said, look, people are always telling you who they are. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, look, I'll give you an example. It could be a friend, it could be a coworker, it could be a girlfriend, wife, whatever. He goes, let's say you go on a date and she's telling you about how this guy cheated her or cheated her out of money or he snuck around or he wasn't this or he wasn't faithful. And then her boyfriend before that and the one before and her high school boyfriend. He goes, you're the next one on the list who she's going to be telling people the same stories about. Now, as an empath, you probably have ran into a lot of these people because you didn't see people for who they were. So one of the things he said, look, if she complains about one boyfriend and he cheated on her, but then the boyfriend before that was a really wonderful guy and, you know, we, we, he moved away to college or, or the other side of the coast or, you know, the other side of the country, you know, that, that's one thing. But if, if every single story is the same story, it's part of her pattern. Or it could, be, it could be him, powder his pattern. So another thing that I learned to really pay attention to is, um, okay, <laughs> so uh, the first one that I can think that stands out was my girlfriend in my mid-20s. I went to pick her up one day, and I think this was the first six months or maybe a year, probably, probably earlier than that. And she met me at the door and her sister was at the door just crying. And I'm like, whoa, what's going on? And, and, and my girlfriend goes, oh, don't worry about that. And I just thought, wow, that's pretty cold. That should have been my number one red flag. But Mr. Empathy doesn't see any flags. <laughs> and so she, um, I said, no, no. I go, I, and I asked her sister, what's wrong? And she's <laughs> like hyperventilating, sobbing. And I'm, I'm thinking like, what the hell? She, she, she goes, and she said her name. She goes, she lies. She lies. And, and I'm like, what? She goes, she lies. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And, and then my girlfriend goes, nah, don't listen to her. Don't worry about that. So this happened again down the road and then it happened again with my last narcissist is their family member had flat out told me 
look, you need to know something about this person. I'm like, what? And they just told me story after story after story about how this person's a liar and how they did this and how they did that. And these were just like not good stories. And I remember I, I even when I went and met with him, I said, hey, man. I go, so-and-so did nothing but tell bad stories that you're this big liar. And he goes, hmm, that's weird. Just, and, and what they did is they, they just blew it off. So Mr. Dumb Empathy Me, <laughs> I was like, oh, oh, okay. But that's actually a technique they do. It's kind of like a devaluing, like you bring this information and they just minimize it. Min they minimized it like it was nothing. I was like, oh, oh, okay. What I should have done was I really should have paid attention to the things he said and how we, how we you know, misspoke and how this and that and the, the lies and things didn't match up and say, hey, I'm out of here. Screw that. I should have paid attention and and stayed alert but i didn't why because i wanted to believe this person was a good person and that right there is a very very dangerous thing to do you have got to stop wanting people to be a certain way you have to let that go you have to let go of well i want to believe this person is this this and that you've that's right there you already screwed up you have to see people for who they are and what they are. And yes, you can do it. This will keep you out of a lot of trouble. The number one rule or lesson or well, maybe it's a belief, I don't know. The number one rule that we have, and we're going to call this the Church of Awesome, is actions speak louder than words. In other words, somebody could promise you the world. Somebody could say, hey, you know, I'll be there at 9 o'clock, or I'm going to do this, or I'm going to bring you flowers, or I'm going to pay that off, or I'm going to pay you back your money. What they say literally means zero. The only thing that means anything that matters at all is what do they actually do? What are their actual physical actions? Did they show up at nine o'clock? Did they pay you the money when they said they were going to pay you? Did they do this? Did they do that? If they did, well, then their words are matching their actions and that's a good thing. But you still have to pay attention to their actions. Because in the beginning, during the love bombing phase, a narcissist will match their actions. If they say they're going to do something, they will do it because they want your mind to get blind. The whole, the whole idea is they know that, okay, look, one thing I think that narcissists know is most humans, they're blind. They go to sleep really fast. So if you do something 10 times in a row, then, then that the, the other person's mind goes, oh, okay, well, when they say they're going to do something, they do it. But from that point forward, they'll not show up or they won't pay you or they won't do the thing they said they were going to do once, twice, three times. But in your mind, you're like, yeah, but you know, th that person, like their words match their actions because they did it in the beginning for a while. Okay. So here's what happens. Human beings are lazy psychologically. It, they're lazy when it comes to thinking. So we have things called programs and beliefs. And beliefs are just programs. That's another program. It's, it's essentially, not essentially, it is when you go back to sleep. So when you first meet someone, you have to turn your brain on go, who is this person? What do they think? What do they believe? What kind of foods do they like? What, what pisses them off? What, what should I not say so they don't get mad at me? Like, what are their values? Like, like what's their background? Like, like, what do they do? Do they tell the truth? Do their, do their words match do, or do their actions match their words? So for the first 10 meetings, maybe more, maybe 30 days, I don't know how long, you are essentially gathering information. So every time they walk in the room, you got to open up. So let's say you're at home with your family and friends that you've known for years. Well, you guys are operating off of programs. All of you are asleep. Very rarely is any human being truly awake. So when this person comes in the room, when it comes to them because they're new and you have no information about them, you're gathering information on, well, how do I interact with this person? What can I say? What can I say? What can I do? What can I not do? Et cetera. So once you get enough information, you, you, uh, you imprint it on your brain. Now it's a program and now you go to sleep. So when they call, they walk in the room, someone talks about, them, oh yeah, so-and-so is a good person. They this and they that. So now they're part of your program. Now you don't have to open up and wake up and, and relearn someone new. Now I'm going to give you a real life example. 
So when I was about ooh, 20, 21 years old, I bought uh, Tony Robbins' book, Awaken the Giant Within, and man, that, that had an impact. In other words, it changed me. I started seeing things in a bigger way, and they didn't like that. I, was living, I lived with my mom and my sister and my brother, and the neighbors, et cetera, like, people were like, oh, you know, that's weird. That guy sounds weird. And people were really harsh. Like, no, no, he's really, this is really good stuff. And I got nothing but negative backlash. So then um, I went to his seminar. Okay, well, no, then I bought his home study course. And that had a real big impact on me. Like, I really studied it. I listened to it day after day after day. I actually listened to the program 13 times. I read his book uh, 13 times, too. So they were kind of getting grumpy around me and I'm thinking, what's wrong with like, I'm, I'm so much happier now. I'm so much lighter. I mean, and like things are starting to happen. I'm achieving my goals again. And, and the thing is like, oh, they didn't like that at all. So I was getting some pretty heavy backlash, um, yelling, screaming, you know, just arguing. So all kinds of, stuff. so then I went to his three day, was it one, two, three, maybe it was three and two and a half or three and a half day UPW. Okay, unlimited power weekend, the fire walk, when you literally walk across burning hot red coals. When I came home from that seminar, I was on fire. I was like, oh my God, you can do it. And I was motivated. I was inspired. I enrolled in college. I was in kickboxing. You know, I was just going for it. I'm reading every day, every moment I can, you know, personal development books. And here's what happened. They were pissed. And it was not kind of sort of. It was visible. It was there. They were just like pissed. They pulled out all the punches. Oh, it's a cult. Oh, he's a bad per. Oh, he's tricking you. Rawr. And it was just like. So one day, my mom was in the in the in the uh, kitchen. Uh, I think drinking coffee or something. I don't remember what it was. And I and I and, I, and she she said something negative about him. And I sat down. I go. I don't understand. She goes. Well, what do you mean? I'm like. Have I been doing some? Have I been hurting you? She's well, no, of course not. I'm like, well, did I yell at someone? I don't remember. She goes, no. I'm like, well, am I not being nicer? She goes, yeah. I go, am I not happier than I've been? Because I was really depressed because my best friend died a few years before that. And she goes, no, she goes, you're a lot happier. And I, I mentioned a couple of things like, am I not lighter and happier and this and that? And she's like, well, yeah, she goes, you were really depressed for a long time there. I'm like, so, so what's wrong with that? And she got real quiet. She goes, huh, I don't know. So there's something I learned in psychology class the next semester. And it was talking about this or, or no, no, no. It was during a neurolinguistic NLP training that was about a year later. And it said what happens is when you change, the people around you get uncomfortable. It's, and it's not necessarily because they don't like the way you changed. It's because they have a program about you and they just revert to that program. Okay, so you guys all know about how you're supposed to clear out your history and your cache and your computer once in a while so it doesn't get bogged down. Well, here's why. When you first go to a website, a website page your computer downloads and gathers all the information and stores it in its um in its cache okay in a little part of your computer it's a, me a memory part so let's say later that day or the next day or a week later you go to that same web page well it doesn't actually go out on the internet it goes to that page first or sorry it goes into your cache in your computer first to see if it has it and then it shows you that So, but the problem is, what if that person changed that page, changed the images, changed the prices, changed whatever? Well, you're not going to see that because your computer didn't go on the internet and go out into the internet world through Google. It's just going to go into your computer and show you what you uploaded a week ago. So you might be looking at your computer and be on the phone with your friend, say, hey, Google this web website address. And they go, oh, wow, this is really cool. It's got yellow colors and it's got these new tennis shoes. And I'm like, yellow colors? No, no, it's blue, red, and green with some, some white highlighting. Like, no. And they're like, tennis shoes? What are you talking about? There's no tennis. Yeah, they're right there at the top. And they're like, no, no, you must have the wrong page. You must have the wrong website. See, if they change their website, it's, it's a completely different website. So you're not actually seeing them for who they are in the moment. 
So now here's the problem with most people. They're very mentally lazy. They don't want to have to relearn who you are. Now here was the problem. I was going, I went to another Tony Robbins seminar about three months later. I went and that was a, oh no, no. Yeah, that was a weekend one. Then I went to another one. And every time you go, you change, you advance, you develop. And then I went to his uh, Date with Destiny, which is, I think it was a six day seminar if I remember right. And I when I came home, holy shit, I was different. And everyone just looked at me like, what the fuck? And it's like, and you could see this look of, um, and I don't mean this in a negative way. It was a look of defeat or maybe it was a look of exhaustion. Like, oh my God. Because they had to relearn who I was again. And for most people, it's not all people. Some people are developing and moving forward. And, and here's something uh, an NLP trainer ta taught me a long time ago when I was going through this. He was, look. He goes, your problem, Michael, is you're connecting with people who are not moving forward. They're not, they're not moving in the direction. He goes, they don't have to be a personal development coach or an NLP trainer like you. They don't have to have the same goals like you, but they have to be moving forward because otherwise you're going to be developing, growing, expanding, and you're going to be around people who are not, and they're going to try to bring you back down. And here's the deal. It's not necessarily even because they're being meanies or being bad guys. It's just because like, you know, Mike, can't we just stay the same? Can't we just hang out? And I don't want to put the effort into growing and learning. Oh God. And you keep changing and that's I'm exhausted learning who you are and learning how much you've grown and changed. I don't want to do that. Now, I'm not saying they told me this consciously or told you that consciously. It's just that uh, most people just want to get by. They just want to get a job. They just want to pay their bills. They don't want to grow spiritually, emotionally, relationship-wise. They just want to keep everything the same. So, now listen closely. So they literally... Don't have to think. A lot of people do not want to think at all. They're just on autopilot. So you're better off being with people who enjoy change because those people enjoy watching you, not only watching you change, but learning from what you learned. That's the difference between people who are unconscious and people who are conscious in the present and in the present moment. Because it takes effort, it takes energy, it takes time. Now, with the, the average person, this is very true. Now, with the narcissist, it's even worse because narcissists are so one-sided, so left brain so either-or. It has to be this way. And they were like, no. And I've actually seen people reach out and grab people. No, no, no. Don't be that way. Be the way you were and physically try to push them and step over. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, that's narcissist. It's because their brain can't handle it. When you change who you are and the way you, the way you interact, it it completely throws a wrench in the narcissist's brain. Their whole brain and program just flips the f out, and they're like they're they're scrambled. I mean, and it freaks them out. I mean, you literally hear them just like scream like, "No, <laughs> you can't be that way. You can't do that." And it's like because they, they can't handle it. They just want you to be in this one way. Narcissists are control freaks. They have this thing where, and, 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 and I'm not even trying to be mean right now. I'm trying to explain something. They, they, do, they are not right brain beings. The right brain is about options and possibilities and creativity and, and mentally stimulating experiences and learning and growing. The right brain is all about development and growth. The left brain is not. It's literally in the box thinking and it does not like change at all. There is a very funny guy and I cannot remember his name or the title of the video, but he's a, he's an older guy about in his probably late fifties, early sixties, but he's been doing relationship coaching for a long time. And he's, and, and men, everything is in a box and don't mess with the box. And this box has this and this box has, no, no, we do not mix the boxes. And the women start laughing hilariously. Because that's true. A very left brain person, everything is separate. And, and that's the thing. What have I told you about the left brain? It doesn't connect things. It separates things and keeps things in their own box. 
Whereas the right brain, it's all about connecting the pieces of the puzzle together so you can see the bigger picture. Left brain people, men in general, do not like to do this. Right brain communication pisses them off, it confuses them, and connecting the pieces will really piss them off. Honestly, it puts them in a panic attack, a lot of them, and that's why they get so angry, because it, it scares them, it terrifies them. So until they learn how to open up to the right brain, see, for people that are very left brain, it's very hard for them to let go. I know because I wouldn't say I was always an extremely left brain person, but I did have a lot of, it, not a lot of issues. I had issues letting go of, of things and, and like I wanted things in a certain way. And when they got changed up, it kind of, it kind of hyperventilated me. Narcissists are on the extreme spectrum of this. So in general, when you're dealing with, say, an average normal person, they're not going to want you to change because they're too mentally lazy. Now, a narcissist, it's amplified to the 10th to the 10th power because it, it, it flips their brain out. They cannot handle that. They can barely handle meeting new people. It's like, oh shit, who's this person? How do I manipulate them? How do I control them? What do I do? It's an exhausting th experience for them and they don't like to go through it. So yeah, those of you who have dealt with narcissists, you know what I'm talking about. They're very controlling. For most of you, they use the negative look, the negative punishment, the verbal you know, the shaming or you're an idiot and like, and to the point to where you completely shut down, you stopped reading, you stopped growing, you stopped developing, you stopped going to workshops or seminars, you just completely stopped on life in general. All right, so now let's go back to what I was saying early on, the first five or 10 minutes of this video. Sorry, this is part one, the video just before this video. So you're gonna have to go back to the last video. So narcissists, in the beginning, their words will match their actions. But at, and they're only doing it until you fall asleep and be like, oh, this is who they are. Here's my program about them. And at that point, here's what happens. This is what causes cognitive dissonance where your brain kind of freaks out and like, you know, party's like, no, they're a good person. You know, they say what they mean. They mean what they say. But then there's a party going, yeah, but you know, they, they didn't show up again and they didn't pay me like they said they were going to. And then they screwed me over again and they did this. And, but, but, and they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry. I'll do it next time. I'm so sorry. And now you're caught in this cognitive dissonance where your program is saying one thing, but your reality brain is saying another thing. And this is gaslighting. Essentially, they got you to gaslight you. So now you are arguing, arguing with you on an unconscious level about who they are. So a big part of you that really loves them because you went through the love bombing phase. No, they're a wonderful person. It's really, really protective of its program. So it's really, really important to keep open to paying attention to what someone says versus what do they actually do. I don't mean to do this just for the first month or so or two months because you know how narcissists are. Once you get past the love bombing phase, boom, they, they completely 180 degrees and they do that on purpose because they know they have this program in you and it causes massive conflict inside you. So number one, really pay attention. Actions speak louder than words. Pay attention to their actions. Number two, just as important, maybe more important, pay attention to when you start having inner turmoil. Because inner turmoil is that inner conflict. When there's an inner conflict in you, something is saying, hey, something is not right here, and start paying attention. Turn your brain back on. Start paying attention to what they say, what they do, etc. Start watching them. Another thing you can do, you can literally mark this on your calendar or put it on your, like, like on Apple, we have this, uh, what they call it, the iCalendar. And it will, you can set a date on it for something and it'll ping your phone and it'll ping your computer when you go on it. Say, hey, and then right in there, hey, it's been 45 days or 60 days. Start paying attention to this person for everything they say versus everything they do for the next 
15 days. And if you start going, whoa, wait a minute, like they're, like they're not the way they were in the beginning. See, that can really help you out. And then set it again another two months down the road and keep tuning back in. Personally, you really need to learn consciousness techniques, how to be in the present moment and to consciously see someone for who they are in the moment. So in my one-on-one -on -one coaching and also in my two-day trainings, I teach people these consciousness and awareness techniques, okay? They're combined with emotional grounding techniques because that's what tunes you in. So just so you know, there are actual how-to techniques that you can learn to practice and develop. That's all consciousness is, is being in the present moment and being aware of what you're seeing, hearing, feeling, smelling, and tasting in the moment, including these images that go through your mind. When an image goes through your mind out of nowhere, you're like, whoa, pay attention to it. Also, your internal dialogue, when all of a sudden you hear a word or a phrase or maybe a, a, a song, like a, a, a couple words from a song or a sentence pops up out of nowhere, you just kind of giggle and say something inside. You're like, wait a minute, why am I saying that? Why did that song pop in my head? Your unconscious mind, your intuition is trying to tell you something. So, I, this is, okay, so number one, it's one thing to sit there and say, hey, you need to do this. Well, you need to learn how to ground yourself emotionally because that reconnects you to your intuition, that reconnects you to your five senses. It tunes you in. Now, there are also awareness techniques that I teach in my courses and also in my one-on-one -on -one coaching that heighten all of this. So now all of a sudden, like, oh, so Mike isn't just saying, oh, tune in or just, you know, pay, like, no, like I walk around in this consciousness all the time because there's certain series of techniques. Now, here's what happens. I've gone so far with it. When I'm not in the present moment, I can feel it because my forehead gets tight and I'm kind of oblivious. The moment I feel that, I start doing techniques to pop back open. This is the same course that I was combining with the Why Men Just Don't Get It earlier. I think it was December 2nd we had it set up earlier in the, this month of December. Let me know which one you like, which one, which one of those phrases you like better. And then I'll just, the majority of people, I'll just name it that. So number one, if you want coaching on this, we can do one-on-one -on -one coaching on all of this. Number two, I realized I need to name that course instead of just emotional grounding. I'm going to name it Step Back Into Your Power. It's either going to be Step Back Into Your Power or Step Into Your Power. All right, so I'm going to set up a seminar, a uh, two-day seminar. One's going to be Step Back in Your Power. The second day is going to be Why Men Just Don't Get It. We're going to set this up. I tell you what, right now we are at the very December 30th uh, at 6.45 in the morning. I'll probably set this out for 9 p.m. tonight. Let me know what works for you. Do, number one, do weekends work for you or do weekdays work for you? Number, It's probably going to be on the weekend if I can get a good deal on, on, the, on the hotel room again. Number two, let me know if you want to do it at the end of January or the beginning of February, etc. Okay? All right. God bless you guys. I hope this video helped you learn a couple of techniques and awareness abilities that will help, help you get along in life better. And the main one is see, see people for who they are in the moment and make your decision from there. God bless you guys. If you like this video, click subscribe, click the like button, make a comment, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.